Hello again. I'm Marie Elchin, and I'm a fiber artist and teaching artist for Fleischer Art Memorial. Sometimes when I'm getting started to make some artwork, I have a hard time getting started because my head is just so full of ideas and it's busy and got worries and I just don't know where to start. So doing an activity that helps me get centered and calm and focused can be a really good thing to do. So let's try that first. I don't know how you're feeling right now. Maybe your head is busy. Maybe you're not sure what to make right now. And you need to get into that flow zone of making art. To get started, you're going to need two markers. It can be any two colors you want. I love blue and purple, so that's what I'm going to use. The first thing you need to do is draw a line down the center of your paper. I'm going to choose one of my colors and draw a line. It could be a straight line or a dotted line down the middle of my paper. This is going to be my focus line. This is the line I'm going to look at while I work. Now, here's the trick. You're going to have one marker for one hand and one marker for the other hand. I'm right-handed. Are you right-handed or are you left-handed? Well, today we're going to be both-handed because we're going to try drawing with both hands at the same time. Bring both of your hands and the markers so that you're touching the line close together. And now we're going to try breathing in as we move away from the line. So I'm going to take a big breath in and move out. And then as I breathe out, I'm going to come back to my line. Whatever I do on the right side, I do with my left side. I'm going to breathe in and breathe out. So when you breathe in, you move away from your line. And when you breathe out, you come back to your line. And you try to do the same thing on both sides of the line. Go away from the line, breathe in. And as you come back to the line, breathe out. By breathing while you draw, it helps calm your body. It makes you feel good. Get some oxygen in your brain so you can think better. Then as you go out, and whatever you're drawing is going to be symmetrical. That means it's the same on both sides. It'll feel really balanced. Breathe in and out. Whatever you do on the right side, you do on the left side. Breathe in, out. When I make little marks, it's hard to breathe in and out. It's just kind of fun to just keep drawing in and out. Breathe in. Decide when it's done. I think my page is full. I'm feeling pretty calm and focused now. How about you? When you're done with your markers, always put the caps on and click them and make sure you've got the right cap on the right color marker. Otherwise, next time you go to use them, you'll get all mixed up. Now that we've done our symmetry drawing, our simultaneous drawing, and breathed a little and are feeling a little more calm and centered, maybe you'll have an idea about what to make for your art. Let's get some inspiration from another artist. This is an artwork by an artist named Heather Hansen. How do you think she made this image? Does it look familiar? It's symmetrical like the one that we made. How many times do you think the shapes are repeated? I bet you could even count them. Every single line is another repetition of the shape, almost like the rings on a tree. She used charcoal in both hands just like we used our markers just now. And she used 
her whole body. Here you can see a picture of her actually making her art. She sits on a big piece of paper with charcoal in both hands. She sits in the center and she draws out away from herself, stretching, and then comes back towards herself. She reaches forward. She reaches from side to side. She reaches backward. She makes these giant pictures. And she repeats the actions over and over and over again, feeling really calm and stretched as she does it. All mark making is related to the body. Nobody can make a mark exactly like you can because your body's special. Your body has a certain size hand and finger, a certain length of an arm. So when you move your body, you're going to make a mark that is special to you and no one else can make something like you can. We're going to try doing some mark making, which means you're going to move your body, but using your marker, maybe that's where that word marker came from, because it makes a mark. As soon as you put your marker to your paper, you're making a mark. How you put your marker to your paper will change how the mark turns out. Try out some different kinds. You're going to need a fresh piece of paper, and a marker. You can change colors or keep the ones you had before. And think about what kind of mark you're going to make. I'm just going to start with up and down, just making dots. So think about if you're just doing up and down, are you moving fast? Or are you moving slow? Does the mark change if you hold it there longer? About thicker. What if you spread out your marks? And they're random. What if your mark trailed as you moved? to make kind of a line. What if I held more than one marker at a time? I'd have to... It fills up faster, doesn't it? That's a dotty kind of mark. I'm going to try to fill up this whole page, but maybe I'd like to switch up my marks. What if I made some short marks by dragging my marker? I like holding these two at the same time because then my paper will fill up faster and it'll be more colorful. What if your mark changed direction? What if your marks overlapped? What if my mark stayed on my paper longer? Long marks remind me of grass. Change direction again. I used even more of my arm. So think about you can move your fingers. You can move your wrist. You can move your elbow. Or you can use your whole arm and move from your shoulder. And depending on how you move your body, it's going to do something different. Small motions, medium motions, big motions. 
at some point your paper will look pretty filled up. When your paper is filled up, we want to try filling up another piece of paper. I'm going to turn my paper to a fresh page. And maybe this time I'd like to change my colors too. Oh, remember, make sure your color lids are on the right color marker and you click tight. Otherwise, they'll dry out and get all mixed up and then that's not good. So, new colors. Let's see, maybe I'll do green and yellow this time. So, I was just doing dots and straight marks. What if I do check marks? It's a different kind of mark. Or what if I did zigzags? What if I made my zigzags even bigger? Used more of my arm. And even more of my arm. Hmm. What if I made hopping marks? This looks like the letter M for my name. I made circular marks. I can make little ones. Big ones. I can make very big ones. Think about how much of your body are you using as you make your marks. I'm going to come back and use one that you did before. What I really like about making all of these marks, I'm not actually really thinking about it that much. I'm just having fun seeing the colors show up on the paper. I'm thinking just, are they big? Are they small? Are they changing directions? Are making X's. And this is also helping to kind of calm down my head. I'm getting into this feeling of flow. And when your brain is in flow, all of those busy, busy thoughts in your head start to drop away. You're just being creative and making art making little decisions about where things go. Do you like it or do you not like it? Is that an empty space that needs to be filled in? Is it done yet? And I'm not thinking about any problems I have. I'm not thinking about any arguments I had with somebody earlier. I'm just enjoying this flow, seeing what happens when my body moves, and I've got a marker in my hand, and my paper gets filled up. It's really good. This paper looks very filled. So I've got one, two pages now. If you want, you could do a third one. But I think I'm ready to move on to the next idea. Don't forget, tap those markers. Hear the click. Let's take a look at this painting by Trenton Doyle Hancock. He started out with all the squiggly lines in the background. Can you see them? The blue and the red on top of that black shape. And they squiggled around. He was getting into flow. But then he decided to make a pattern. When you repeat a mark in a very regular way, it will become a pattern. Trenton Doyle Hancock uses this wavy ogie pattern in a lot of his artwork because it reminds him of his grandmother's house. When he was a little boy, he would play on the floor in her kitchen and she had a tile pattern in her house that looked just like this one. Take a look around you. 
Do you have any patterns in your environment right now? Maybe it's in somebody's clothes. Maybe it's on the furniture. Maybe it's on the walls. Think about what patterns do you have around you and where can you get inspiration from? The kind of artwork that uses patterns exclusively is something called a zentangle. In a zentangle, an artist will start with just a few lines on the paper, usually like three or four lines, and those lines divide up the paper into different spaces. Then they take each of those spaces and fill them with a different kind of pattern. You can see here a pattern that was made out of triangles, a pattern that looks like weaving, a pattern that looks like cells, a pattern uh, that looks like eyeballs. Sometimes they start really simple with just repeating shapes, and then they, some of them get colored in, they have details added to them, and they start to get kind of complicated. But let's try this pattern making out. Once again, you need a fresh piece of paper, and for this one, you might want to find your black marker. You'll have really high contrast. It'll stand out. On my paper, I'm going to draw at least three lines. And I'm going to try to touch the edges of my paper with my lines. If you want, you could use your initials to help you draw some lines. So my first initial is an M. So I'm going to do M that touches the edges of my paper. I don't know, is that one line or is it four? Hmm. And my last name starts with an E. So I think I'm going to make a curly E and start over here, the edge of the paper. It's okay to cross over a previous line. And I think I'm going to make it loop and then come back and touch the edge of the paper. So now I have at least two lines, but you can see how I've got different spaces. I have the inside of this loop, I have this shape, this little half circle, there's this spot, this spot. But I've got lots of different spaces that I can fill in. Now I'm going to take a look at each of those spaces and come up with some patterns to put into them. You can keep using your black marker or you can change colors whenever you want. One way to think about it is what patterns do you already know? If you repeat lines, you can make stripes. I think I'll fill this little spot just with some stripes. I know a pattern named polka dot. I'm gonna draw polka dots in here. I'm looking around my room and I see a plaid fabric. Plaid has stripes in one direction and stripes in another direction. See how I'm filling up the spaces? Oh, and plaid usually has more than one color. Let me add another color in here. A lot more like a plaid. But I'm only filling the one space. I'm not crossing over into the, any of the other spaces. So just fill the space that is bound by a line. When you go into another space, do a different kind of pattern. I'm looking around and outside I see some bricks. So I'm going to make a brick pattern also starts with a stripe. Then it has sort of a dotted line that skips every other row. My bricks. Dotted line skips every other row. pattern. I'm looking around and hmm, I see a pattern of 
spirals and curves on a mirror nearby me. So I'm going to put a pattern of spirals. Fill up the space. As you go, repeat your mark, repeat your shape in a regular way. Maybe things stay the same size, maybe they get bigger as they go. But when they hit the outside of that shape line, stop. So I'm not crossing over into any other shapes. Just filling up the one I've got. I'm looking around and I'm seeing a pattern of flowers. So I'm going to draw. Very similar as they repeat through my space. Remember, don't cross over into another space, just fill up the space that you've got. Let's see. You can always repeat a pattern too, as long as the shapes patterns aren't touching. So I've got a pattern of stripes here. Maybe I'll fill the sky with another continuous. Last one, what should I put? I'm gonna make a pattern of shapes. I'm gonna just draw lots of squares in here. Anytime you repeat something, whether it's a line or a shape, you repeat it in a regular way, it turns into a pattern. If you like this and you want to keep going, you can start filling in with your colors or bring back some of your marks. For example, my brick pattern will look more like bricks if I put some brick texture with these dotty marks. And also try making your patterns more complicated by adding details to your existing patterns. Like what if I put a red circle inside of all of these other circles? Or what if I connected my dots with lines? kind of detail can you add to the things that you already put to make it more complicated, more interesting, more colorful? So how'd you do? Do you like making random marks or regular patterns better? Which one was your favorite pattern? Do you have a mark or pattern that nobody else thought of? You have one that feels like it's really you? I hope you had fun making patterns and marks today. I sure did. Make sure you save all of your pieces of paper because we're going to be combining everything we make into one final artwork.